Hi, my name is Antonio and I'm an optometrist who is sick of people misusing their eyes in front of the computer. So in this video, we'll talk about how computers cause eye strain, how you can minimize the strain, and some simple tips you can apply to further prevent damage to the eyes. Heyo, Antonio. With all that is happening in the world right now, there hasn't been a time in history where we're being forced to be indoors and on computers than ever before. Many cities are going into lockdown, large tech companies have apps or websites that draw our attention, and we now rely on databases to store our most valuable memories. If you think about it, computers are a relatively recent invention that our eyes have not yet evolved to deal with. Human eyes have evolved across a span of about 500 million years, and the first modern computer was commercially available less than 100 years ago. In 1990, about 15% of US households owned a computer, and 30 years later, that number is now close to 90%. And the estimation that 50% of the global population is going to be myopic by the year 2050 is a good reflection of that phenomenon. So it's very important that we know how to cope and adapt to these changes, as many patients nowadays mostly come into the eye clinic for the same reasons. I spend all day in front of a computer for work, and I feel like my eyes have gotten worse. If there are any optometrists watching this, then let me know in the comments how often you hear this. After a heavy session on the computer, your eyes may give off a burning sensation, or even a gritty feeling, as if something is bothering them. You might sometimes rub your eyes to alleviate the itch, and it feels better for a bit, but later the burning continues. Computers themselves and the light that it emits don't cause damage to the eyes. Rather, it is our behavior as human beings in front of screens and devices that causes the damage. The most common issue that computer users run into are eye strain, eye fatigue, burning sensations, irritation, redness, blurred vision, and dryness. Collectively, they can be termed under the umbrella of computer vision syndrome, and this syndrome almost always arises from three potential mechanisms. One is the ocular surface, two is accommodation, and three are the extraocular muscles. And before we get into these three, I would really appreciate it if you could drop a like on this video so that other people can see this too, and consider subscribing. It's free and it helps me make more videos like this. Computer users often report complaints of eye dryness, burning, grittiness, or heaviness after an extended period of time at work. Users' eyes may even tear up in an attempt to restore the proper chemical balance and to properly lubricate and re-wet the surface of the eye. The most common cause is when the blink rate is decreased and the exposed ocular surface area is increased, causing desiccation to the eye. It has been postulated that the blink rate is decreased further in a dark setting where it is difficult to read, or even when the workload demands a lot of focus as people are less likely to blink in order to not miss any details. The cornea is very sensitive. In fact, it is the most sensitive part of the body. So it's prone to the effects of drying and chemical imbalances from environmental factors. Take for example, air conditioning. If you have dry, conditioned air being blasted into your eyes, they will dry quickly. On top of that, in a typical office environment, you may have static buildup or even airborne paper dust that may get into the eye and irritate the surface. To combat this, make sure you're not sitting directly in front of an aircon and remove any airborne particles such as dust or pollen. Most people normally blink between 10 to 15 times a minute. That's about every four to six seconds. Studies have shown that the blink rate at the computer is significantly less than normal. This reduction in blink rate may be as great as 60%. A reduced blink rate at the computer contributes to a poor tear film quality and it temporarily stresses the cornea, resulting in symptoms of dry eye. This is a video that shows this quite well. All of this green that you see are the tears covering the person's eyeball. In a second, you'll see that the tears evaporate slowly, leaving the surface dry, and this is when the eyes start to feel that stinging sensation. Typically, you want the tears to evaporate between 8 to 10 seconds right after blinking, 
But in this video, you'll see that the tears evaporate much quicker than that. That is to say, if you can't keep your eyes open for longer than 10 seconds because it starts to sting, there is a good chance that the tears are evaporating too quickly. And in that case, using eye drops or doing hot compresses will likely benefit the eyes tremendously. The reading of text on paper is normally performed while looking downwards. This results in the eyelid covering a substantial portion of the front surface of the eye, thus minimizing the evaporation of tears. On the contrary, computer users usually view their reading material in a horizontal gaze. This results in a wider palpebral fissure and an increased surface area exposed to the effects of evaporation. There's also the instance where the increase in eyeball exposure leads to incomplete blinks, therefore leading to partial dryness. On this person's cornea, you'll see that the bottom third of the cornea has bits of damage as they don't fully complete their blinks. It is widely known that the number of incomplete blinks a person does highly correlates to their overall dry eye symptoms. So as a good rule of thumb, when you are reading or working on a computer, not only is it important to blink more frequently, it's just as important to complete those blinks. Poorly applied cosmetics can block the openings of an oil secreting meibomian gland. This in turn contributes to a rapid evaporation of the water component of the tear film. When in doubt, avoid makeup near the oil glands that are located adjacent to the eyelashes and always remember to remove makeup thoroughly. I often find that people who wear heavy eye makeup present with bits of mascara that are floating about in their eyeball this is bound to mess up the tear chemistry and lead to discomfort. If possible, apply minimal eye makeup and remember to remove them thoroughly as the eyes will love you for it. When things are close to us, and a good guideline is anything within an arm's length, our eyes need to accommodate, which is a fancy way of saying we need to work our eye muscles to focus our vision. Simply put, the closer the object, the more work our eyes have to put in. Our ability to see objects clearly up close is determined by how hard we contract the ciliary muscle. They control the shape of the crystalline lens, allowing us to focus light onto the retina properly. When they are relaxed, our vision focuses into the distance, and when they contract, our vision focuses up close. As we age, our ability to contract this muscle doesn't necessarily decrease, but instead, the crystalline lens itself hardens making it more difficult to focus on closer objects. This is to say that young people in their 20s or 30s have an easier time staring at a screen than someone in their 40s or 50s. Regardless of your age, however, taking regular breaks in the form of the 20-20-20 rule is still encouraged. 20 minutes of computer work should equal 20 seconds of looking into the distance at about 20 feet away. That's six meters who use the metric system. Additionally, those that have uncorrected astigmatism, that is to say those who have astigmatism and don't wear glasses, were significantly more likely to experience computer-related symptoms than those without. If you spend all day in front of a computer and haven't had your eyes tested yet, then I would highly recommend you do, because the chances are you may benefit from glasses that optimize your vision at work. If you could increase your productivity and relieve eye strain at the same time by wearing glasses, then why wouldn't you? I have a pair of computer glasses that I use when working on YouTube videos and it's been an absolute lifesaver. I'm able to stay productive for hours without the sensation of eye strain. Alternatively, because we know that closer working distances cause more eye strain, you could take the opposite approach of increasing your working distance and therefore reducing eye strain that way. However, with the introduction of productivity applications in smaller devices such as your phone or your tablet, this solution is becoming increasingly more difficult. Humans by design have two eyes. This means that when you look at things up close, the two eyeballs must come together to point to the same thing. This requires the extraocular muscles to synchronize and coordinate their movements. There's a total of six extraocular muscles that control the eye's direction. 
the superior, inferior, medial and lateral recti, as well as the superior and inferior obliques. Just like every other muscle in the body, if you work them too hard and for too long, they will inevitably fatigue. Several papers have looked at what the most optimal computer setup was for prolonged work, and they found that the computer screen should be placed at around 20 inches, which is about 50 centimeters, away from the user, and the screen should look up slightly at about 15 degrees. This optimal setup should help with relieving eye strain and visual discomfort as it allows for a more natural working posture. So what did we learn today? We learned that computer related eye strain is a combination of the eye drying due to the external factors and the effects of muscle fatigue from prolonged work. For the eyeball, it is important that we blink more frequently and alleviate any burning in the form of hot compresses or lubricating eye drops. In terms of eye muscle fatigue, it's best that we create an optimal setup so that our body takes up a natural posture, as well as promoting regular breaks in the form of the 20-20-20 rule. If you have any questions regarding today's topic, then feel free to reach out in the comments below. But that just about wraps up today's video. If you learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want a thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.